I'm Nathan Colby. Uh, I work at January 3rd. We're a little creative agency in downtown DC. Nathan is the director of production at January 3rd. His range of skills includes commercial cinematography, directing, and editing. While today Nathan feels supported by his small and highly collaborative team, in the past he's experienced a total lack of creative partnership, something that greatly impacted how he felt about his work. I had never worked in like a professional landscape um, as a part of that big of a team. I didn't have that partner that like I felt like got me. It was still this sort of creative loneliness. This is the January 3rd office. It's where I work. This is where we're gonna shoot. Nathan and Brian have both been creating professionally for a long time, so we knew their skills would be evenly matched. What will be interesting to watch is how the two of them challenge each other to experiment with lighting design. So you have a lot of video experience then, right? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. You've <laughs> been mean, doing it for quite a while. <laughs> when you're kind of self-employed, you don't really yeah. know like how you fit in. You, you know, mm. an editor, does that one thing and does it really well. I kind of do like a little bit of everything. So I direct yeah. and I DV and I edit. So you don't really know how you're gonna land, but um, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing it a long time. It feels a long like. time, yeah. yeah. Lighting is one of the challenges that you kind of wanted to go over today. Lighting is a challenge for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's something like I'm trying to learn right now. It's like I'm trying to grow my channel too, right? For me, um, time is like the biggest enemy. Yeah. And I just don't have the time to experiment and try something. You know, when, mm -hmm. when we're doing stuff with clients, it's like, okay, well, we have to pitch the thing that we know how to do, how to hire for, all that. Certain things that I'm really interested in, definitely color, yeah. color, contrast, trying to get a little bit more, um, I guess, texture with like random materials or mirrors and stuff. Also, some sort of emotion behind the lighting and if that like resulted in like two different setups this versus that okay so how should we get this started um, <laughs> um I, I took a couple screenshots of uh some creators who created like really cool lighting effects yc imaging he's on youtube as yeah. well yeah like i love that look um yeah yeah there's this one here from manny ortiz cool yeah it's almost like these two images combined taken that YC imaging, 80% yeah. this, 20% that, awesome. Yeah. And then just mm -hmm. getting something on the background. Yeah, that's like what I was that. thinking. Maybe we can just kind of experiment with different textures that we have around and show each other what we came up with and then yeah. we kind of like discuss it and see how we can improve or add on to it. It's gonna be a fun challenge. We're gonna play around with some lighting in the office right now and see if we can recreate something. We have two hours. Damn it. We're making slight progress. So this is the big three for today. We got the Aperture 120D Mark II. We got the Godox SL60W and this Falcon Eyes Dingable LED. Oh, also I have this pocket RGB light that is definitely gonna come in handy today. So the Godox light that I have here came with four different colors. Uh, gels, so I'm gonna try playing around with these and see if I can create a cool effect with it. We're just gonna get this up, get those lights in place, and then we're not in a bad spot. Okay, so I shot a few clips with the same lighting, just to kind of create a little short video. It took me a little longer than I wanted to to shoot that little piece, but um, I'm gonna keep going and trying out these other concepts. We're gonna use the Aperture Nova as our key light. I have a little bit of a soft box and a grid that should help kind of direct it, but keep it nice and, and soft on the shadows. Oh, So Nathan sent me a video about using mirrors to reflect light onto a product or your subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up this mirror and just have like a little rectangle piece of it showing and reflect it onto the watch that I was using earlier and see how it goes. Have 
to gel it up. But I think we have like our main players here and then frame it up in an artful way. You can see there's our scattered pattern on the background. This is our key light. It is the Aperture Nova. Um, it's giving off a nice kind of cool vibe. This is the Aperture 60X. It's bicolor, but I'm actually using a gel on it because I want to get that uh, very specific uh, blue-green kind of look. See how it's hitting the side of my face and really edging me out from the background? Then we have our funky uh, 300D that's doing all that, all our background work over here. So you can see there's just all this cascading different little streaks of light. And we're getting that from putting our 300D on the ground like this. There's the ballast. There is a light with a Fresnel 2X in full spot. Uh, we're gelling it with the same blue green. And then it's going all the way up here all these little dusty uh, mirrors. This is our, our contrasting color, our complementary color. So I have this one edge light with the Aperture MCs. I have like a group of um, four of them just on a baby plate. Um, and so that's just supposed to hit the opposite side of my face. And then I have this 120D with again, another um, CTO gel in there. That's just kind of spreading some orange onto the background to kind of help gradient from our crazy teal to our subtle ember. Five lights, if you count the MCs as one, which is a lot. Um, and I think, you know, you could simplify this. So how's everything going? It's uh, the layers of complexity are slowly uh, piling up. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of video, I was thinking, um, I was just playing around with uh, the stuff on my end maybe like take different angles and shots of the same lighting and scenery and kind of maybe put it together. I did a little sample one while, while I was playing around here. I'll show you, I'll share my screen with you. Maybe we'll tr maybe try to use the same color theme and maybe try to find like one unique pattern or something that we can kind of reflect. We have our two colors. Yeah. So we make a little bit of a story, right? Just mm -hmm. out of this like completely conceptual, nothing crazy. We film shots introducing one color, and then okay. we film shots introducing the other color, and then we film shots with them together. Oh and okay. it's like a story of conflict. Yeah. We've kind of gone off on our own missions here. The idea is to introduce the warm, introduce the cool. Right now I'm in the warm zone. This is kind of wacky. I don't know if it's good or step, uh, stupid, but. See how like as I move that around, light just goes across my face? Hoping that seeing the two together, you'll feel something. All right, so today is day two. I did a lot of research yesterday trying to figure out what type of light sources to use to project something cool onto myself and the watch that we're using as the subject in the video. So this first idea I have is to project animated graphics using Storyblocks assets. We are gonna dive right into the editing here. I'm trying to keep a couple different kinds of shots in my brain as I edit through. I really like it. I like how this um, warm tone is just edging the chin and hitting the temple. Now under all this mess, I just need to grab a crystal board and do the very last thing that I want to do, which is do a cutout. Um, so the shot didn't really turn out as good as I thought. A little frustrated about it. I'm gonna load it onto my computer and see what we can change around just to make it work. added in our sound effects. I think it all kind of comes together and I'm pretty happy with it the way it is. How did how did everything go yesterday? It, it was good. Well, yeah, the screenshots that you posted on the mood board they ended up being, like, they looked really, really good. Awesome, yeah, Just the yeah. the colors and everything that, the, how you projected the warmth and the, the cool shots. To, it was really good. Were you able to put like a clip together or like? Yeah, let me just send you the link.
that was a, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like a trailer for like a movie or something. Thanks, thanks. It um, <laughs> mm-hmm. it was completely different than like what I had pitched and what I kind of thought we were gonna get out of this. <laughs> for me, it also clicked a lot more when I saw your first edit, where it was like the, that string out like the three clips. I was like, okay, <laughs> you can actually do more than just like a quick little motion. Yeah. and I, I liked that a lot more. So I was like, okay, let me just try to run with that kind of vibe. Like I love yours, but mine was more just kind of like trying different type of lighting styles in each scene. Awesome. Um, I'll show you mine. So it was more yeah. like product play of scenes. So my favorite shot was this here, which I was actually kind of inspired by that, that mirror that you had yesterday. Yeah. So what I did was I found some uh, Brist, like Bristol boards at home and I just cut these weird shapes into them. <laughs> yeah. And then just projected the light onto the table. And then for the movement, I just kind of p- moved my hand around in front of the light just so that it looks like it's coming from like a window or something. How'd yeah. you do all that movement on, on that wrist shot? I just, so the, the, the things that are projecting onto my uh, hand are, are, are graphics from Storyblocks that I put, put on a projector. Oh, yeah. And I just kind of like projected it on here. It looks cool. And it's like, it's super. Uh, yeah, just a lot of movement. Right? What was your like favorite part of the, the whole thing? Like the whole uh, creation process? I, I was pretty nervous going in because I haven't done something for myself in a long mm-hmm. time. And so my expectation barometer is all over the place. Right after we had talked that first time, it was like, this is just going to be cool. This is going to be fun. Like we, like neither of us have exactly a, like a super strong vision we were kind of just letting it guide us through doing this i was like dude i get to like make another connection i haven't made new connections in like years <laughs> same <laughs> so the main thing when looking for a creative partner is to not be afraid to reach out i know it sounds very simple but honestly it was a small little thing that stopped me from working with other creatives i always felt like my work was not good enough so it stopped me from reaching out to other people feeling that they'll just ignore my messages anyway. I feel like everyone has something unique and different to offer, so don't let that be a roadblock to you when it comes to reaching out to new creatives. Even if it doesn't work out, at least you tried. You never know who you will inspire.